is there anything we should be aware of since we're new at those of us that are new at it to mm -hmm. avoid anything, obviously that, but is there anything else that we would come across that might suck us in that you're like, absolutely do not go down these roads? Don't trust anybody telling you to wire them Bitcoin. They'll give you more Bitcoin. There's so many scams online about Bitcoin. You know, you can watch like fake videos on Michael Saylor. He's always having lawyers shut him down. So be very careful. If Michael Saylor's ever telling you there's a, a giveaway or to give him Bitcoin, he'll give you more Bitcoin or there's a prize or an event transfer. But it's all fake. AI is scary. You could literally watch videos of the president saying things that he never said because it's AI. You can watch videos of Michael Saylor telling you, give me Bitcoin and I'll give you more Bitcoin and I'm going to put it into a prize pool and we're all going to win. It's going to be so great. And you're like, Jesus, I'm watching him say it right now. It's him. He's fucking saying it. And it's like, not really him. It's AI. So just remember, um, pretty much the only thing you should do, therefore every other question you have may be irrelevant, is buy your Bitcoin in the three ways I told you. Either buy the iBit, BlackRock ETF on a stock thing like Charles Schwab or buy it on Coinbase, actual Bitcoin. It's very obvious. It'll say you're buying Bitcoin, not wrapped Bitcoin. You're buying Bitcoin, not Bitcoin cash. You're buying Bitcoin. There's wrapped Bitcoin. There's all these other derivatives. You're just so buying it's Bitcoin. It's literally BTC. So you want to make sure that you're buying BTC. No, no. It'll just be a big orange Bitcoin. And it'll say Bitcoin and it'll say $58,385 or whatever the price is. And it changes every second because it always trades nonstop, 24-7, all the time, all day. Just like Ethereum and all the other cryptocurrencies. Remember, crypto, besides everything besides Bitcoin is crypto. Bitcoin is Bitcoin. So when people mix the two together, it's really bad for Bitcoin's reputation. Bitcoin is Bitcoin. And everything else is, it's almost like God is God and everyone else is a superhero, right? It's like, there's just God. And then everyone else is a superhero. Don't don't mix the two, right? They're not the same at all. God will destroy all the other superheroes if he wants, but he doesn't need to because he's God. So he just sits there or she sits there and like, it's just God. And it's like, then there's the superheroes. So there's all the cryptocurrencies and nobody knows what's going to happen with them. How long will it be around? Who will succeed? Who will get regulated? Who will get sued? Who will get this? Like XRP, everyone's been waiting and I've been waiting for years. Oh, maybe when they win their lawsuit. Jesus, that's been going on for three years. Maybe when they win their lawsuit. That's always the statement for Facebook. NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, when they win their lawsuit, we'll see what happens. The stock will either go up or down, depending on what happens with the lawsuit. You'll never hear that with Bitcoin. Um, and all the biggest regulation and regulatory things with Bitcoin have already happened. So there's not really any big things. And the last big one was really Mt. Gox, um, where Bitcoin is basically being given back to people that it was stolen from. And those people can decide if they want to sell it or not. And the ones who are selling it, it's all being gobbled up immediately because 70% of the 16 million Bitcoin that's in circulation that's not lost um, is, is not moved or sold at all. Cause it's held by people like me and Michael Saylor, who literally Michael Saylor says, I'll never sell ever because when you're rich, you understand what that means. He'll never sell ever. Why does he keep buying it then? What's the point? Cause rich people borrow against their assets. So when a rich person says, I'll never sell, you think, Oh, that, that doesn't make sense. If it keeps going up and you make money, don't you want to sell? No. Cause you don't, that just shows you don't understand the game. Rich people don't sell cause they don't want to pay tax. And banks will give you a loan against your assets. Any bank in the world who's a legitimate large bank will give you an 80% loan to value on Apple stock. So if I had a million dollars in Apple stock, I could go to Wells Fargo or JP Morgan or anyone, it's a big bank and say, can you give me $800,000 cash today against my million dollars in Apple stock? And they'll say, of course, just sign this document and this paperwork and the million dollars in Apple stock is ours now until our $800,000 cash um, loan is paid back. And then you can take the $800,000 in cash and assuming that what you told them it's going to be used for, it's used for and they approve it. You go buy real estate or you go buy whatever you want with the $800,000. That's it. And now you have a, assuming that Apple doesn't just crash. If it crashes, then you have $800,000 and they have all your Apple stock. That's how it works. You get liquidated. Um, but if it doesn't, because historically Apple doesn't crash 20% unless COVID or some big event happens, which the government can do anytime they want, right? They can just fuck you over anytime they want. They can just go, boop, COVID. War, boop, thing in the news that makes things crash, boop, play with interest rates, boop, whatever they want to do. They can just fuck with us and make the market do what it wants. And they can make it go up forever, which is crazy because it's not supposed to go up forever. But if they just keep printing it, we'll go up forever. But when it goes up forever, only assets go up and the cost of living goes up. And so again, it's just this, it's this crazy game that once you guys dive in, I spend the majority of my time doing this now. I still have three operating companies. I exited one last year. So I had four, I sold one, put all the money on Bitcoin. I have three, I need to get these three higher and then I'm going to sell them. Um, and I'm going to just sell them and put the cash on Bitcoin, even if Bitcoin's at 200 grand, 
because it's a store of value. I'm not buying it to get rich, even though it keeps making me richer. I'm buying it as a store of value. Because if I get $200,000, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if Bitcoin's at $200,000 and I get $10 million in cash, I know that the $10 million in cash will go down in value. So I have to put it into real estate, stocks, gold, silver, something, something, risk it and gamble it in venture capital. So if I get $10 million on an exit, I have to put it somewhere. I can't just hold it because I know that it just keeps going down in purchasing power. And when the government really wants to screw us over, it'll go down in purchasing power more than 10% a year, maybe 20% a year, which means every year I hold my $10 million, I'm losing a million to $2 million a year in purchasing power. So I need to dump that shit as soon as possible. I get $10 million. The day that I got wired millions of dollars from my exit, I literally deployed all of it in like 30 to 45 days. And I know you think, oh, that's not, that's not in a single day. Well, first of all, it's quite a bit to move millions and millions and millions of dollars out of one bank account into Coinbase to buy the Bitcoin and then transfer the Bitcoin back into my self-custody and then move it into multiple other uh, wallets. Probably, I probably lost me at some point there because you don't even know what I just said. And so like in that period of time, I moved millions and millions and millions of dollars from my bank account over into Coinbase bought the Bitcoin, transferred the Bitcoin to one of my private wallets. From my private wallet, I then transferred it to other wallets that have multi-sig and triple, quadruple authentication on them. So now I'm good to go. But I did that in a period of about 30 to 45 days. And Bitcoin was about $25,000. Um, and yes, it's great that it went up to 74 and then it went to, now it's at 58. Um, but again, I'm buying it because it's a store of value. So if I get $10 million and Bitcoin's at 200 grand, I'm still going to put the $10 million into the Bitcoin at 200 grand because the Bitcoin will go from 200 grand to 2 million, maybe five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 20 years, depends on how much the government decides to print more money. But every time the government prints more money, Bitcoin goes up inevitably over a long enough period of time, the government always prints more money. And what always goes up real estate and Bitcoin. Cause it's finite. There's, there's only so much Miami beachfront, Manhattan, Paris, London. I'm not talking about shit real estate. I'm talking about good prime real estate where there will never be more of it. There will always be more shit real estate. A bomb just has to go off or a fire has to happen in Hawaii. And now nobody wants the real estate except guess what? All the rich people came in like Mark Zuckerberg and bought like all the land and Amazon Jeff Bezos bought all the land from the fire that happened in Hawaii. All the rich billionaires came in and bought all the land. Nobody wants to buy it. You and I don't want to buy it because we're like, shit, a fire just happened here. House is gone. But the rich people came in and were like, fuck that. This is beachfront property. And they bought as much as they possibly could because um, rich people are going to do that. And so rich people are always going to buy the world's best commodity because it's finite. And they know I got to dump my billions in cash into things that are better, like real estate, like Bitcoin. And so this is what the rich people will do. They will always buy Bitcoin at regardless of the price. And so just remember, as more rich people get educated, they will be buying Bitcoin. It's not about the poor people. The poor people will use it as a medium of exchange and safety net versus the devaluation of their Zimbabwe, Venezuela, and Egypt, uh, Turkey, et cetera, and even the US dollar and all the other places. But like rich people are going to buy it no matter what, because it's beachfront property. It's the world's best apex predator as we went through. And so just remember that. Rich people will buy it at whatever price it is because they don't give a shit. They're just converting their fiat uh, tr tr trash cash into the best assets. And there's only so much Bitcoin and there's only so much real estate. And that's why the rich people will always, remember, the 1% of the world owns 50% of the assets. They're going to own 60%. They're going to own 70%. They're going to own 80%. They're going to own 90%. And this is why BlackRock, who owns $12 trillion in assets, that's a, that's a lot of assets. They own $12 trillion. That's what they got into Bitcoin. Because they said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bitcoin's one of, the, you know who owns one of, the, uh, one of the largest real estate holders in the whole world? BlackRock. And so, because they know if we just hold, we just hold the real estate long enough, it's going to keep going up. We'll just keep buying more real estate and we can borrow against it. And guess what? Boom, they got into the Bitcoin game. Once Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, biggest company in the whole world was like, oh, oh, I got it. I got to open a Bitcoin ETF. They have 574 ETFs. This is the number one ETF of all their ETFs. And it's also the number one ETF of all the ETFs in the entire ETF space ever since inception of 100 years of stock trading. And so just remember, wow. it's just starting. It's early. Real estate's been around for over 100 years, um, but that was before technology. So real estate couldn't spread as wood and it's difficult. You have to fly there. You have to verify. You have to check the land, assess the land, check the soil, check the property, make sure it's not downstream of a chemical center, make sure it's not in a risk area, all the other things, right? Real estate's hard and it's still $330 trillion. Bonds, there's $300 trillion literally in just fake debt money. Most of the money in the debt bond market will flow into Bitcoin because people are just like, I'm just putting my money there because it's just better than other places and it's theoretically safe. But more and more people are going to just remember you're set with Bitcoin because the government will always print money, period. End of story. Bitcoin will go up forever because governments will always print money forever. 
The other reason you're set is because really rich people are starting to rebalance their portfolio, which means move money from other assets into other assets. And so they're going to move money out of bonds, move money out of real estate, move money out of stocks, and they're going to put it into Bitcoin. And if only 1%, remember I showed you the graph in the very beginning and it had all the different things, the big thing of bonds, the big thing of stocks, the big thing of cash and equities and all that. If 1% of each one of those boxes flows into Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes to $1.2 million. 1% of bondholders realize the factual truth, which they're aware of, their ice cube melts faster in the bank, ice cube melts slower in bonds. Okay, I'll take bonds. The problem is ice cube gets fucking bigger and harder and stronger in Bitcoin and real estate. But real estate, for the reasons we stated, is not as good as Bitcoin. So I can buy all or a little or some of Bitcoin and I can move it out anytime I want. And so again, if 1% of people who have money and all those things, move it into Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes from 58,000 to 1.2 million. Just do the math. What happens? It's quick math. Keep up. When 2% gets in, Bitcoin's at 2.4 million. When 3% is in, Bitcoin, bing, bing. When 5% of the all the other assets move into Bitcoin, we're at like $7 million in Bitcoin. Just keep doing the math. Bitcoin will go to millions and millions and millions. Just like you would have never thought my grandma's little piece of shit house in Tustin, California was $25,000 and now it's 2 million. You would have never thought that a little tiny house would have gone up that much because it's unfathomable to think that the government would have printed that much money in her lifetime. It's unfathomable to think that a piece of steak would have gone from 5 cents to $25 in her lifetime. Same steak, same cow. In fact, technology got better to take care of the cow, to feed the cow, to nurture the cow, to process the cow, to manufacture the beef, to get it to the store. All of that actually got better. So the cost should have come down. Didn't went up by and thousands of percent. Keep in mind in the real estate side of all of this, right? If all of these industrial companies, or I should say if all of these companies and rich people own all the real estate and they're not selling yet, right? Then we are going to turn into a rental world. And remember when rich people buy stuff, they buy a <laughs> shit ton. They buy a shit ton of it. Plus they, they don't sell it. So that means our billion, children are going that's to the thing. Renters. That's the thing. Bitcoin is the only finite commodity in the world and rich people never have to sell. Get your head around that. It doesn't need to be used as a currency to buy shit. It just needs to be the go-to globally trusted thing that a rich guy in Dubai and a rich guy in China say, fuck it. We have billions of dollars in Bitcoin. Let's swap. I want to buy that yacht from you. Let me transfer a billion dollars to you in Bitcoin that nobody can mess with. And I can do it on a Sunday afternoon and we'll meet up on our yachts. 